morning and welcome to today's Five with Fitz. You know, I gotta say thank you. I saw a few comments from yesterday saying that you missed my uploads. Thank you so very much. I will do my best to keep at it. We were on the road in Las Vegas at the Money Show, so I hadn't figured out how to film remotely, but you know what? I'll get there. Anyway, on with the show. The markets feel tired or perhaps it's just me. Either way, I'm in to win and you should be too. Here's my playbook. Number one, C-suite optimism is tanked. And here's how to get around that. Evidently, my fears about changing attitudes in the C-suite from a few weeks ago were well-founded. A new report from Deloitte Global shows a marked decline in optimism among CFOs, chief financial officers surveyed. Just 54% think that the economic outlook is set to improve over the next year. Only 66% are optimistic versus 75 the previous quarter. Now that's a decline of nearly 10%. Talent, retention, morale, disgruntlement, and rising wages are all viewed as problems. Fortunately, the data also shows that companies investing through crises tend to emerge stronger for the hardship, especially when it comes to big tech. Not only that, but those same companies are capable of protecting their margins, retaining workers, and, here's the key part, boosting profits. You know what to buy. Point number two, investing in immortality. Here's four stocks to get you started. I stopped by Charles Payne's show yesterday on the Fox Business Network, and it's always an honor to do so. He asked me about investing in immortality using moonshot technologies outlined by a recent Bank of America report. There are four stocks to get you started in the reasons why. You can find that on my channel from yesterday. Point number three, China's Evergrande, a mega real estate developer, is about to self-destruct, and here's why you should care. Rumors are flying that Chinese mega developer Evergrande is going to implode. Debt is reportedly $300 billion or more. The company, get this, has warned twice in the past two weeks that it may default. Here's why you should care. Foreign bondholders are particularly at risk. JP Morgan estimates that there are more than 128 banks and 121 non-banking institutions at risk of cross default if Evergrande goes feet up. Harvard professor Kenneth Rogoff and Beijing Tsinghua University professor Yan Chen Yang estimate that a 20% decline in Chinese real estate activity could cause a 5 to 10% decline in Chinese GDP even if there's no banking crisis. The risks of contagion make no bones about it. The risks of contagion outside China are very real. For instance, Australia's iron ore business could get hit, as could EV projects in Europe, where Evergrande has spent liberally. Point number four, the end of an era. The last Sears located in Illinois is shutting for good. Transform Co., the company that purchased Sears out of bankruptcy, says that, quote, this is part of the company's strategy to unlock the value of real estate and pursue the highest and best use for the benefit of the local community, end quote. Never mind that Fast Eddie Lampert, former CEO of Sears, effectively said the same thing for years as he bled the company dry. If you're part of the OBA family, you know what to buy when it comes to retail because we covered it in the August issue. Management takes community responsibility a whole lot more seriously and what the heck, turns a tidy profit too. Point number five, the one company capable of challenging Amazon. Walmart Plus, Walmart's alternative to Amazon Prime, reached 32 million with an M members after launching roughly 12 months ago. Deutsche Bank recently put a $185 target on Walmart shares, and I think that's doable. Today's bottom line, the rules of the game have changed. Every investment you make from here forward must be in companies capable of operating at $1 billion in scale or you don't want to buy it. Now, as always, let's finish the week strong. Make it a great day. I'm Keith Fitzgerald. See you next time. Thank you for watching today's Morning 5 with Fitz. Click subscribe to get daily market notes right here on YouTube or sign up for the email versions at the link below. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram for my real-time thoughts on markets, analysis, and more.